Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. This lecture is regarding protein translocation to nucleus. It would be divided into two parts. Part A, protein transport into the nucleus. And Part B, protein export from the nucleus. This video will deal with the part 1 that is how the proteins are moved into the nucleus. So, we have a protein here in the cytoplasm which contains the NLS which is the nuclear localization signal and that's a ticket for the protein to get entry into the nucleus. Now there is a nuclear pore complex embedded in the nuclear envelope where the inner nuclear membrane and the outer nuclear membrane fuse thus forming a gateway that regulates the flow of proteins between the nucleoplasm and the cytoplasm. Furthermore, the constituent building blocks of the nuclear pore complex are the nucleoporins which play a massive role in the transport process of the proteins. One such type of nucleoporins are the Fg nucleoporins which contain repeating sequences of phenylalanine and glycine peptide repeats. So, for the selective import of the protein, first a free nuclear transport receptor known as importin binds to the NLS of the cargo. Then the importin directs the cargo to the nuclear pore complex. And here the importin protein interacts with the Fg repeats of the nucleoporins. Once the complex of the importin and cargo reaches the NPC, the Fg nucleoporins test them for their authenticity and then they are given permission to enter into the nucleus. So, these Fg nucleoporins act as a physical barrier to prevent the free movement of the macromolecules like protein. Basically, the selection strategy for the transport of the molecules by Fg nucleoporins is size dependent. Generally, the small molecules pass through the nuclear pores via passive diffusion. But the macromolecules which are larger than 40 kDa, they need specific transport receptors known as chiropherins. In this case, it's important, right? So, this is what an Fg nucleoporin does. It checks whether the large protein is bound to its receptor or not. Now, as soon as the cargo important complex reaches the nucleoplasm, another protein joins the process. This protein is named as RAN. So, this RAN is a G protein which for now is bound to GDB. And to push this mechanism ahead, a guanine nucleotide exchange factor replaces the GDP with GDP. For what? To form RAN GTP. Now this RAN GTP can bind to the importing, but there is a twist. The binding of the RAN GTP to the importing induces a conformational change in the importing protein which shows importing receptor cannot bind to the protein anymore and hence the protein is released. So what about the complex of the importing and RAN GTP? We need to export it out of the nucleus. And for the next round of the protein transport to the nucleus, the RAN GTP is subjected to a GTPase activating protein, which removes GTP and importing conformation is changed again, which is suitable for binding with cargo. This was all. Thanks for watching.